In this video, we'll be talking about what a linear function is. So let me write this down right here first. f of x is the function notation. And whenever we have a function in the form of mx plus b, this is a linear function. And the reason this is called a linear function is because whenever you graph this, you are going to end up with a line, a straight line. And this is not a stranger to you guys already, right? The typical y is equal to mx plus b. So first, let me write this down right here. f of x is the function notation, but then it's also the same as y, especially when you're talking about how to graph this equation here. And we know the m right here stands for the slope, and the b right here is the y-intercept, right? So this is not so bad. However, when we are encountering a word problem or an actual situation, what should we do? There are two key words that we have to focus on. First of all, read through the question, and if the question is mentioning anything about rate, or well, sometimes they call it the rate of change, or maybe something per something. In that case, that will be the slope, the rate. Okay? The rate is the slope, the slope is the rate. And then, on the other hand, we'll be focusing on the beginning value. And the reason I say beginning value is because hopefully the beginning value, the B right here, will remind you the B right here. The beginning value, the starting value, the initial value. And now let me show you guys a few situations on how this works, and especially how to set up an equation. Okay, so here's my first example. Besides going to school, you also have a part-time job. So let me write this down right here. You have a part-time job. And what's the reason of getting a job? Money, right? So at your part-time job, you're going to get paid $10 per hour. And with all this information, we are ready to write a linear function for this, or linear equation, depending on how you want to say it. So I will write down equation because I would like to write down y is equal to something something. First, let me write down y. This is equal to, in order for us to write the equation, well, we have to have the rate first, right? And what's the rate? $10 per hour. And you see, even though right here I didn't mention the word rate in particular, but then whenever you have per hour, this is the rate, $10 per hour. So we know this is 10, and that's the number that goes in front of x, 10x. And what do we have for the b value? Well, zero in this case, because if I don't work, I'm not going to get paid. Do we need to put down plus zero? We don't, right? So y is equal to 10x, this is it. In this case, the x was stands for the number of hours, let me just write this down the number of hours that we work, and then the y right here is the money that you get. That's it. And let's look at the next one. So here's the second situation. And as we know, the job that we had earlier that only pays $10 an hour, it's not good at all. Of course, we want to make more money. So you quit after two days of working there, right? Especially $10 per hour, it's also below minimum wage. <laughs> Anyways, so you go around, ask people around to find a better job. And here is another job for you. This job is so much better because when you go to work, your boss is going to pay you $8 for your lunch right away. Suppose you really stay there and work for the day though. Okay, so this is the lunch money. Some construction sites, they may really give you the lunch money, and some restaurants, they may also let you eat for free, so you can take that into consideration, right? So we have this lunch money to begin with, and then this job is even better than this, not just the lunch money, because they pay you higher. They will pay you $14 per hour. And once again, with these two information, we are ready to write an equation. So y is equal to mx plus b. We have to figure out the rate and also the beginning value. That's all we need. y is just a y, and then this is equal to, what's the rate? 
14 per hour, right? So once again, you see the per something something. So the 14 right here is the rate. That's the number in front of the x. Put down 14x. In this case, do we also have the b value? Yes, we do. Because right here, you get the $8 right away. So we can add the 8 at the end. This is it. y is equal to 14x plus 8. That's all. The x stands for how many hours you work, and then y is how much money you can get paid. That's all. So now let's look at another situation besides having a job. So suppose you just begin with your class, and there were a total of 45 students, including yourself. So 45 students enrolled in your math class or English class whatsoever. 45 students on the very first day. However, as you guys know, throughout the semester, you will get less and less students because students drop, right? For whichever reason. <laughs> but anyways, let's say on average, you have two students drop the class per week. Let me just write down per week like this. Well, with this being said, can we write an equation based off with this situation? Well, we can start off with y, and this is equal to what and what? Let me write it down in this form again, y is equal to mx plus b. In order for us to figure out the m, we have to talk about the rate. This is the rate, right? Two students drop the class per week. Whenever it's the per something, this is the rate. But even though we have a 2 right here, is it just a 2 or something else? Well, we are getting less and less students, right? So it's not just a 2, but rather we should have a negative 2. <laughs> so y is equal to negative 2x. And what's the beginning value? It will be the 45. So we add that 45 at the end. This is it. In this case here, let me write it down, x will stand for the number of the week, right? And y will stand for the number of the students that you still have in the class. If you want to figure out how many students that we have, then just plug in that number of weeks. Maybe after seven weeks, then you plug in seven right here, and then you just do the computation, and then you can figure out how many students you still have left in the class. That's it rate and the beginning value and the point right here is that you have to pay attention to what kind of rate that we have right here it's dropping so we should have a negative rate okay so hopefully this video helps and I even sacrifice my red chalk right here to make this video okay. that's it